Today, well, July 14th, 2015, if you're not watching on the date, is the last time we will ever explore a new body that has ever been classified as a planet in our solar system. Pluto! Woo! We are flying a probe by Pluto for the first time. Up until now, Pluto has been a dot, a smear, a few pixels. But the New Horizons probe is on its closest approach to Pluto right now, if you're watching on the date. As the probe has gotten closer, it's been sending us new images from views we've never seen before of the icy dwarf planet. There's the whale's tail, this complex band of terrain 1,600 kilometers long, and this target in the most recent image from July 12th. These dark and light regions tell us about Pluto's geology and perhaps a frozen methane, nitrogen, or carbon monoxide frost. And as the probe gets closer, we'll get a clearer view of Pluto's heart and its largest moon, Charon. This is the view of Pluto we had before New Horizons, and this is our view now. This is history in the making. The probe, which I think looks suspiciously like a cheese head with a saucer hat, was launched on January 19th, 2006. This voyage has taken nine years. Nine years! The probe unfortunately won't be able to send any of those close flyby images back today, so when we do get them, I'll link them in the description. So why not? Well, the probe is completely focused on taking data right now. It only gets one shot. It's like if you see this perfect rendition of Groot, you're gonna put all your effort into getting that photo. New Horizons will be using its power on Ralph, the detector with visible and infrared spectrometers, and Alice, the detector analyzing Pluto's atmosphere and looking for atmospheres around Pluto's moons, and the other detectors measuring the solar wind all the way out there, and the atmospheric temperature, and the space dust, and more. There's a lot of detecting to do, and all those detectors are using less power power than a 30 watt light bulb. How was New Horizons able to power itself that whole way? Solar? Nope. There's not enough light from the sun all the way out near Pluto. In fact, the intensity of sunlight is about 1600 times less than that on Earth, so you'd only be able to put out one watt of power with a perfect solar panel this big. That's not even enough power to light a single Christmas light bulb. Instead, the probe uses what's called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which uses nuclear energy and can put out 200 watts at this point in the voyage. So how many probes have we sent to Pluto? One! This one! This is the first one! That's what this video is about. And after Pluto, New Horizons will leave the solar system after exploring some of the objects in the Kuiper Belt. That's the donut-shaped region full of dwarf planets and other small bodies. If it were shown in pictures like this more often, it would make the solar system look a lot less lonely. So is this the first time that a man-made object will reach interstellar space? No. Voyager 1, launched in 1977, crossed the boundary into interstellar space in 2013 and was the first probe to ever do so, even though Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 were launched earlier. They, along with Voyager 2 and New Horizons, will all eventually enter interstellar space. Which reminds me that the last time a probe flew by a new planet was the year Taylor Swift and I were born. That was when we got these incredible first images of Neptune, which were taken by Voyager 2 in 1989. It's about time we explored Pluto. Even if it's just just a dwarf planet. We've explored all of the planets in our solar system, and when we came upon a new one or a new moon, the most common reaction was that we were really surprised by what we found. We found auroras on Jupiter's poles, a storm on Neptune that could swallow Earth, and explosive geysers on Neptune's moon Triton. The consensus among the scientists working on this mission is that we will be surprised by what we find on Pluto. So, nine years of travel and we're finally there. How did we get all that way? Well, this was the fastest launch of any rocket ever at 58,000 kilometers per hour. That was more than enough to escape Earth's gravity. Then the probe headed over to Jupiter, took some incredible images in 2007, and got a gravitational boost to increase the speed by 14,000 kilometers. Thanks, Jupiter. Then the rest of the journey took eight years because the solar system is freaking huge. In the end, New Horizons traveled nearly five billion kilometers to get to Pluto. Now, we'll probably never see New Horizons again, but there are a few mementos on board. Florida and Maryland state quarters, ashes of Clyde Tombaugh, the man who discovered Pluto in 1930, and some US flags. But right now, there's an opportunity to get involved in another message being uploaded to the probe. If you'd like to send a digital message to the stars, check out the One Earth Project. Link in the description. So what's next for space exploration? Well, we hope for more data from the probes on the solar tidal waves that reach the probes in interstellar space. And NASA has upcoming plans for exploring Europa, one of Jupiter's most awesome moons. So keep an eye out for all of that. Thanks for watching.